if I were to tell you that you did not have to choose whether to do the live series collections or set one collections, but you could simultaneously do actually both. In regards to the set one collections, we're aiming for 140 total players, so you are able to select one of the 399 overalls available. These 99 overalls will no longer be able to be used inside of ranked on July 7th. That is when set three comes out, which means that these cards will expire unless you use the wild card slot. Wild card slot is a feature that I do not believe is available yet inside of the game, but the wild card slot allows you to add a player from any set to your season eligible squad to take into rank. So if we're going for 140 of set one and we get Chipper Jones because you believe Chipper Jones is going to be the best bat the game brings until 99 Mickey Mantle comes out and you have him in your wild card slot, it doesn't matter if it's set three, four, five, or six, as long as he's there he's gonna be able to play keep in mind that wild card slot is interchangeable so you can swap out chipper jones for francisco lindor bob gibson whoever it is that you want to be at that spot if we're talking about jeter why is the set one collection important it is important because you can min max and collect at least 140 set one players for absolutely free while selling all the other set one players in order to complete the live series collection start off with team affinity inside of team affinity you will find 60 set one cards that are non-sellable that you are going to collect because if you don't you're wasting them In the world baseball classic program there are going to be a total of 29 cards that are non-sellable that belong to set one as well in tops now there are nine currently and we will be getting a lot more each and every single week but we are only counting the nine In the egg hunt program we get another five non-sellable cards which will go ahead and equal up to 103 set one collection cards that are non-sellable you might not understand the power that has but you're getting 75 overall jazz chisholm for absolutely free and are going to be seven set one diamond cards away from also getting 99 overall trey turner for absolutely free speculating that we're going to be getting nine diamond rewards weekly from tops now that is going to mean that we're going to have 27 remaining set one cards that are going to be non-sellable just from this program which is going to equal 130 non-sellable set one cards to collect that means that we're only going to be 10 cards away from at least obtaining one of the three when it comes to chipper jones babe roof or pedro martinez interruption thank you for 25,000 subscribers let's continue crushing it smash that like button red subscribe button notification bell inside the description we got our twitch discord social medias and how to become a member to tackle the live series collection i believe that team affinity is going to play an important role inside of team affinity at 95,000 team affinity points you will be getting these division packs for each division. You will be getting eight of these division packs total once you reach 95,000. There will be four live series players where two will be bronze and two will be silvers and duplicates may occur. This is able to help out greatly whenever there are roster updates and where it's just transactions and they add new bronzes and silvers inside of the game. You might be able to find those inside of those packs, making it a whole lot cheaper for you to complete that collection if that's the only card you need. There are 12 teams that I want you to prioritize in terms of collecting. The Tigers are the first team I want you to prioritize on buy-in. We rounded it to the nearest thousand and they are roughly 3,000 stubs. How do I want you to purchase these cards? I want you to enter the marketplace and for each and every individual card, I want you to never just buy it now at the price it's at unless someone made an error and is currently selling it for very close to the sellable price. That is the only exception. So if someone made an error and instead of putting it for 278, they put it for 158 stubs for you to go ahead and purchase it, that is the only time I would say yes. You want to take advantage of that because that would be a snipe. But what you realistically want to do each and every single time is create a buy order. And your buy order is always going to be either one stub higher than whatever the top seller order is so your buy order can be prioritized or if the sellable order is a little bit higher than the rest and there is a big space in between for example if Jonathan scope had a buy order for 200 stubs and then the second buy order underneath it was 157 stubs then I would not suggest putting another buy order in there for 201 stubs instead 
go ahead, drop down to 158 stubs, and as soon as that 200 buy order gets sold to, yours will be up next, and you will end up saving stubs in the long run. The Royals are also a very cheap team, 3,000 stubs to collect. Then we go to the Oakland Athletics. These are also 3,000 stubs to collect. Washington Nationals, 3,000 stubs to collect. We have the Arizona Diamondbacks coming in at 4,000 stubs to collect. Chicago Cubs come in at 5,000 stubs to collect. Pittsburgh Pirates, 6,000 stubs to collect and then we have the San Francisco Giants at 7,000 stubs to collect Colorado Rockies at 7,000 stubs to collect and the Reds have finally dropped back down to earth they are for 7,000 stubs to collect but before they jump back up in price I'd highly suggest collecting them even though it is very unlikely that will that they will continue jumping up in price the Orioles as well 8,000 stubs to collect and then the Boston Red Sox are 9,000 stubs to collect if you collect each and every single player on this team it is going to be roughly 64,000 stub, but we're going to round it up to 65,000 stubs. So if you have 65,000 stubs to spend, make sure you knock out these 12 teams first. Wait, I have no stubs, although. How am I going to make the stubs in order to complete these collections? We got that. Just give me a second. A team that a lot of people also say to prioritize is the San Diego Padres. And I agree 100%. You do want to prioritize the San Diego Padres because we do not know what overall Fernando Tati Jr. is going to be when he enters the game cycle. SDS could do him dirty and bring him in as an 84-83 overall or they could go ahead and bring him in as an 85-86 overall. It's just dependent on how SDS is feeling. We also do not know if he's going to be inside of the game in the first transaction or attribute roster upgrade on April 21st. It could be that day that he enters or he could enter the game much longer down the line in another roster update. So always keep that in mind. You want to go ahead and collect these guys with caution because if he doesn't enter the game instantly, then the prices of these cards will drop and if he does not come in as a diamond then the prices of these cards will most likely drop as well Wait, i was very lucky i got myself Shohei otani or i got myself mike trout first of all congratulations you're one of the luckiest people in this world because i've been opening packs non-stop and i have yet to get one of the two anyhow i would not suggest selling them off one you're gonna be losing value right now because in a roster update I'm not saying they're going to be upgraded, but it is more than likely that people will have invested into cards that will go up in overall. And once they sell those cards, they will have a lot more stubs. Therefore, they will be looking to complete collections and buy Mike Trouts, buy Shohei Otanis, and other high overall diamonds. So instead, I would hold on to those high overall diamonds that you know aren't going to drop in overall in order to capitalize and make more stubs after the roster update goes live. But if you're looking to complete the collections and you pull, let's say, for example, Mike Trout, I would highly suggest instead of tackling those 12 teams, the next person you should tackle is Shohei Otani because you never know when Shohei Otani is going to get another boost that is going to inflate his price a lot more. So if you have one of the two big diamonds or one of the three big diamonds that a team has, then I would highly suggest looking to complete that collection as soon as possible, unless those high tier diamonds have a possibility of dropping and add of high tier into 85 to 89 overall range. Also, Edwin Diaz did not get taken out of the New York Mets Live Series collection and they already made their first transaction update. That's how we got Anthony Volpe and a lot of other players. So it seems that Edwin Diaz is going to stay on the team forever and he's going to be a gatekeeper. So his value will remain. Blade, how do I make stubs? Well, there are investments. That would be my number one recommendation. If you enjoy playing MLB The Show and don't want to live inside the marketplace, then you can get the show app on the phone and then set up an auto clicker and make a ton of buy orders for cards that you believe are going to go up in overall. We will be having a roster update predictions video soon on the channel, so stay tuned. But an example would be someone like Rafael Devers. If any gold, silver, or bronze is selling close to their quick sell value, which means the minimum you can sell the card for, then those cards are cards that I suggest investing in, especially if you think they could go up in overall for example Rafael Devers is crushing it right now he's hitting for power he's hitting against lefties and he's hitting against righties Rafael Devers he has been diamond before in MLB the show and he has a great chance to be diamond again inside of MLB the show so if he were to get an upgrade and you were to have bought 
100 Rafael Devers at 1,000 stubs, and he went all the way up to an 85. Depending on the quick sell value of that 85 overall, you'd be able to make a profit on that 1,000 stubs you made or spent, excuse me, per Rafael Devers. Or you could try selling him inside the community marketplace, but it's gonna be a lot harder since a lot more people would have invested in him as well, therefore driving his price down rather than up, unless he is due for another upgrade. The second method is flipping, but flipping is a method that you need to be dedicated to the marketplace. Yes, you can passively do it as well, but you need to really be dedicated to the marketplace to know which cards are hot, which cards aren't. And there's a website called showzone.gg that tells you the best cards to flip. So I would highly suggest checking that out if you were going to take the flipping route to it. Now, I personally, I flipped before. I don't like flipping as much either because to me, I'd rather play the game and just let everything happen naturally but if this is the route that you're gonna take you're gonna always be looking for cars that have a good profit margin after the 10% cut so for example JT Realmudo sells for 124k if you wanted to buy him currently it would be roughly 108k with the 10% tax cut you can say that you are losing out on 12k off of that 124k just off rip so instead of 124k you are going to be making I'd say roughly 111k with 600 stubs and if you spent 108k to buy him that would be a 3k profit per JT Realmudo that you flip if he remains at this price now a big indicator on you being able to flip them fast and continue accruing stubs non-stop is how hot the card is and how many JTs there are inside of the marketplace or inside of Diamond Dynasty. This is a rare card, so it is going to be a lot more rare to flip him. But if you were to go ahead and enter the perks, unlockables, sponsorships equipment section these cards or these pieces of items they sell a lot more rapidly and they might even have better profit margins as well third approach is going to be inventory wipeout so if you've opened up a lot of packs you most likely have a ton of duplicates lying around inside of mob the show the free agents one i don't want you to touch we have another method when it comes to free agents but for the players that belong to mob teams what i would highly suggest just is first lock them into your collection and then once you have them locked in if it is a duplicate you will never be able to sell a player that has that no sell tag that you've already locked into a collection so whenever it is a duplicate i will look at the buy now and i will look at the sell now and if it is selling close to the quick sell value that is the only time i would tell you to use the quick sell options to either quick sell one or quick sell the duplicates another time would be if the common is selling for let's say 15 stubs and then the sell now is five stubs it is not worth the time to go and compete against other people trying to sell a common for 14 stubs or 13 stubs when you're only going to make two to three stubs per sell order that you create so when it comes to those i would also advise using the quick sell options now when it comes to the ones that are selling for a little bit more for example if we had ourselves three alley rutchmans i would go into the community marketplace and i would individually list each and every single alley rutchman as a sell order one stub underneath the highest sell order in order to prioritize and make myself some stubs and get it out of the way because i've already collected one and i know i'm going to keep one forever i told you not to worry about the free agent players because there are exchanges and exchanges are key in particular when roster updates are coming out whether it's transaction updates or whether it's going to be overall updates because they add bronzes silvers and even golds to teams so what happens you have collected all of the live series players and you've completed your free agent collection now what you're gonna do is after you sell off all the live series duplicates you're only gonna have duplicates that be long to free agent teams and these cards are not going to have great value inside the community marketplace and they probably won't sell too fast either so i would just go ahead and put 
put all of these cards inside of exchanges and i would do that with as many as i possibly can in order to get myself a bronze pack the bronze pack it could be a free agent it could be a live series player then you're gonna rinse and repeat once you get all the bronzes and you're gonna sell all the duplicate bronzes to that you have to live series teams and collect all the new ones and then all the free agent bronzes you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna exchange these players for a silver player and then you're gonna repeat the whole process once again and do it for silvers to gold as well another great stub making process is going to be battle royale if you are skilled enough for it because if you consistently can get nine wins or at least average let's say eight to seven wins then you're going to be able to get nine wins at time and get an 85 to 89 overall and you might roll lucky and get ronald acuna or another high selling 85 to 89 overall and then if you get 12 then that's a 90 plus and you should be able to make stubs easily like that your final resort is going to be waiting to the middle to late life cycle of mlb the show to complete the live series collections if that's the route you you want to take it's going to end up saving you stubs in the long run since all the cards are going to be relatively cheap but at the same time if you wanted to use that jeter mcguire or sosa early unfortunately you're going to be getting them much later when they are owed to everyone else but does it really matter no it doesn't if you did end up enjoying today's content hit that like button or subscribe button notification bell check out the description twitch social medias discord how to become a member have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed and i will catch you all in the next one peace out